AI never stops innovating. Today we have another very cool, very nice framework, an AI framework for talking avatars. Basically, this is one image, and it's able to animate the motions and expressions of the character's face, allowing it to follow the audio and create AI avatar talking videos. And this isn't going to require heavy transformer diffusion models to generate that. It's using stable video diffusions, which we commonly know as very local computer-friendly AI models. And with a little bit of modification in the UNet framework, it animates the image and makes the mouth move in the AI avatar like this. Now, this is going to be a game changer, I think, because there are a lot of services or SaaS platforms running online where you've got to pay for subscriptions to create AI avatars like this. But now we've got this really good one. It's called Sonic. Sonic is created by Tencent and they're using the SVD and UNet models to modify them. This framework allows us to transform a reference image and audio files based on how the audio's wavelength sounds. It animates the motions of each image frame, and then, of course, we shift those into videos. Sonic has motion controllers, spatial audio attention, and temporal audio attention, so it makes the mouth movements and the character's facial expressions work with just one image. It's able to generate examples like what I just showed here. Very smooth, very stable. Compared with other AI avatar frameworks like Latent Sync or even previous frameworks like Live Portrait, many of them have some flickering or aren't quite stable in video presentations. We can try the Sonic framework in ComfyUI. Tencent has created a lot of AI models and frameworks, and their portrait animation framework is open source. Just a few days ago, they released the ComfyUI version for Sonic, enabling us to play around with it right now. There are a few steps to use this in ComfyUI, and I've listed them out in text files like this. I think a lot of beginners struggle with how to install it and figure out what step comes next or where to download things. So I've listed it here. First, we're going to clone the repository and put it into ComfyUI. The easiest way to access it in ComfyUI is to go to the ComfyUI Manager, then the Custom Nodes Manager, and install ComfyUI Sonic by searching for this keyword at the top. You'll see the custom nodes listed in the Comfy UI Manager, and it was added not too long ago. So just click the Install button, and you're going to install this on your local machine. The next step is doing the PIP install requirements for this custom nodes project. As you can see on the GitHub page here, in the requirements.txt, there are a few different things listed. If you've already installed those, then you can skip that part. Otherwise, you'll need to go through the PIP install requirements.txt one time before you boot up ComfyUI again. After doing that, once it's installed in the ComfyUI manager, you can try restarting it from there. That's the easiest way, but sometimes you might get some import failures for the custom nodes. For some people, it's because they don't fully understand what CUDA or which version of PyTorch they've installed and whether it's compatible with these custom nodes, etc. You'll see those error messages in the ComfyUI startup command prompt window. So you can try this out. Just restart your ComfyUI and let's see if it works this time. And yes, it's working. Looks like, yeah, I had no issues this time. Here it has installed ComfyUI Sonic and it's starting my ComfyUI again. So back to the ComfyUI page. Now we've got to pause in ComfyUI for a second. We'll need to move on to the second step, which is downloading all the model files in step two. In step two, we're going to Google Drive. This is from the author on the ComfyUI Sonic GitHub project page. If you go to the GitHub page right here, they have all these links. First, you'll need to download the checkpoints from the Google Drive link the author provided. Also, download the OpenAI Whisper tiny files, which include the config JSON, model save tensors, and the preprocessor JSON files under the Whisper tiny subfolder. These will be placed in this file structure now. I'll list this file structure in my post and link it in the description below this video. The last step is downloading the SVD checkpoint models. Well, if you've already got the SVD checkpoints, like me since I've already run Mimic Motions and other animation frameworks using SVD, you can skip this part. The only thing we need from the SVD model widgets is the SVD save tensor. I'm using the SVD XT 1.1, so you'll have something like this in the subfolder. When you go to the Comfy UI Models folder, you'll locate your SVD checkpoint models. For example, I have this one, SVD XT. 
1.1 save tensor file. Put that in the checkpoint folder. Secondly, we're going to create a sonic folder which is right here. You'll need to manually create this sonic subfolder and set up the file structure like this. Now, the Google Drive, don't ask me why they put it there, but that's how it is. Inside the Google Drive, you'll find the sonic folder and the riff folder where you'll see some files. You need to place the file structure correctly like this in order to run this framework. Otherwise, if you miss any files or put them in the wrong structure, it won't work. So be cautious about that. The IFE framework model files are going to be placed under this subfolder along with Whisper Tiny. We only need these three files. Place them under the Sonic subfolder and make sure to create a Whisper Tiny folder for them. The rest of the audio models, UNET models, and YOLO face detection files for face detection will also go directly under the Sonic subfolder. Once you've done that, it should work. So, check out the Google Drive links. They're provided on the GitHub project page, and I've linked them here as well. It's easier and more convenient to copy and paste each link into your web browser. Then, follow the file structure like this, and you'll be good to go. Of course, the last step is the SVD checkpoint models, as I mentioned earlier. If you already have SVD, just place the SVD files in the checkpoint folder. And basically, we're finished. We've completed the file installation, downloaded everything, and placed it all in the proper folders in Comfy UI. After that, we'll move to the Comfy UI web UI page. First, I'll empty this page, and then we can start playing around with it. When you double click on the diagram here, some people still ask me, how do you bring up this search bar? Well, it's pretty straightforward. You just double click on an empty area and it pops up the search bar. Then type in Sonic and you'll see these three custom nodes of the framework, the loader, sampler, and data nodes. These are pretty straightforward for me. Even though this is my first time using it, I can see that it's not difficult to install or use. Right here, when you look at the models, you'll see the Sonic loader and you'll also notice the Sonic UNet integration. The UNet is right here. As soon as I click this drop down menu, you see it populates automatically because it goes directly to your models folder, specifically the Sonic subfolder we just mentioned and set up. We created that subfolder under the models folder. So select the UNet model file. This is the core UNet model file for the Sonic AI framework. Okay, next, we're going to prepare the data. Here we have the Sonic prep data custom node. I think it should align with the loader, the UNet loader we just discussed. So why are we getting the model's input data point here? Because we need to load the SVD, as I'm seeing now. Maybe we can do that through the checkpoint models and see how it goes. So let's load the checkpoint models. When you load the checkpoint models, you can select the SVD checkpoint files right here. But here's the catch. When using the commonly used checkpoint loader, we typically get the clip and of course the VAE. The clip is usually for text, but in this case, we also have the VAE, which connects with the red dot here. However, what about the clip? That's, that's not what we're using right now because we need to input an image. For example, you can load an image here. That's fine. We've got the audio loader for inputting your audio and clip vision. Actually, this isn't the typical way of loading clip or clip vision, where you'd use IP adapter clip vision files or Flux Redux clip vision. We're not using those here. Instead, it's still based on the SVD model file. And there's a clip vision specifically for SVD because as we've played around with SVD before, you'll know that SVD uses an image as input. It doesn't rely on text prompts to animate videos or anything like that. That's just how it works. This SVD AI model is designed to receive an image as input. Therefore, we need to do something special for the checkpoint. We're not using the normal checkpoint loader node. Instead, we need to use something called the image only checkpoint loader. This one is specifically for image to video models and is dedicated to running SVD checkpoint models. Right now, I'm using XT 1.1. Of course, you can use older versions of SVD, Stable Video Diffusion, which are also compatible, but why not use the latest version if you can? So, connect this back again. The clip vision you see here is actually the clip vision running for Sonic. If you're wondering why I'm connecting this, you can dive into the technical side of this framework by checking the research paper or the project page here. It gives some hints about that. Since this framework is built around SVD, it shouldn't be using other clip vision models to process your image input. It's tailored specifically for SVD's architecture. Instead, it's just using SVD itself and allows us to proceed with that. And of course, the other data we need is the image. 
I've already got the image loader here. I'm using a portrait AI image that I've used before as an example. And for the audio, if you have existing audio files, you can use the load audio node. This is also part of the video helper suite, one of the components in there, as well as in MM Audios. But of course, by default in ComfyUI, within the core nodes, we have the load audio node here. This is the most standard ComfyUI node for loading audio files, and you can use this as your audio input. But then, if you're talking about something more freestyle, like randomly generating some text, I've got my previously created custom node using Kokoro Text to Speech. This time, I'm using this as the audio input, and I can type some text in here to do demonstrations in this workflow. With that, we've pretty much completed the data preparation here. As you can see, the minimum resolutions, durations, expand ratios, etc., can all be set as input parameters here. You can customize these based on your preferences. A duration of around 10 seconds is good enough for testing or speaking a sentence. If you want to go longer, then you'll need a longer audio file. Or in this case, since I'm using text to speech, you'll need to input a longer text. After that, we have the sampler, which is pretty self explanatory. Connect the models, data, and also the data directories. All the prep data files are here, creating those data modules, and we're good to go. Next, we have the images. Now, this isn't going to show you the load image preview. Don't rely on that. You'll just get stuck with each image frame showing the mouth moving without proper context. Instead, of course, we're going to use the video here. Therefore, we're going to use the video combine node, linking it up to the images. Then you'll start seeing some video results here, However, there's no audio in the video combine output. If you check here, you'll see just the mouth moving without any voice. Therefore, we need the audio output as well, which comes from the text to speech node here. I'll link that into the audio input. This way, we have both the visuals and the sound as inputs. The video combine generates the result. And lastly, for the FPS frames per second, we can connect that to the frame rate here, pointing it to the output it will directly convert the frame rate as an input. Then we'll switch the format to MP4. And basically we've completed a pretty simple, basic workflow for the text-to-speech AI avatar, generating the output in MP4 format. The video will be generated like this. So just like many AI avatar services you've seen online, maybe a lot of you guys have checked out Hydra before, where you see some kind of quality that's similar to what we're seeing here with Sonic, I think most of these are going to be more accessible now in open source versions for talking avatar services like this. We can put it on our local machines and let's run this one to see how it looks. So I've been loading the text to speech really fast. It finishes within a few seconds. I got the demo text from DeepSeek where I just asked it to generate some random introductions for YouTube channels. And I put that into the voiceover script to try it out in Comfy UI Sonic. Right now it's loading pretty successfully here. Let's check out the command prompt window. As you can see, the command prompt window right here is loading successfully using the clip vision projections and SVD. But there are some errors in Miniconda where the asynchronous IO got some crashes during the last loading. Not sure where that's coming from, but um, well, those are minor things. We can fix that when we have time. But right now, the inference for SVD is working. So we can wait for the result and see how it runs. We've got our generated result, and it looks very nice. Look at that. We have the input image, and let's put it side by side. Here, we have all the coherence of the character's face. It hasn't been modified too much. There's a little bit of change on the face, especially you see the skin tone on top of that. After the animation, some details like dots on the face and marks on the chest have been smoothed out in this area, but then... The mouth animations and facial expressions are way better than a lot of AI talking avatars, and even a lot of paid subscription commercial AI avatars can't reach this level. I've tested those before. Lots of them reach out to me via email asking if they can be featured in my videos, etc. But when I test them, they don't meet my expectations, so I don't feature them. So, of course, back to this project, Sonic, it's awesome. Yeah, we, there's no complaint at this moment for making these video examples, no complaints at all from me. Let's check out how the quality syncs up with the audio. Welcome to Benji AI Playground, your gateway to tomorrow's technology today. Ever wondered how AI is reshaping our world? From automating workflows to gen- 
Yeah, just a 9 second animation. You can see the whole thing. The mouth movements, the facial expressions, some hair movement, and even the head tilting left and right. Those kinds of subtle movements are all created from just one image. I mean, that's awesome. When we were testing live portrait, for example, we had to use a driving video to replicate how the driving video's movements worked. But that's not the case here. This framework animates by itself using the waveform of the audio to detect how the facial expressions should move and how the motion should flow. It's purely driven by the audio, and we're just using one image as input. This fulfills a lot of people's wants in real, practical situations like creating presentations or online videos like this. We can easily use this for presentations or similar tasks. I think a lot of freelancers on platforms like Fiverr or elsewhere might find themselves jobless if AI keeps evolving like this. Seriously, when these technologies become more transparent and open to people, instead of hiding behind $200 monthly subscriptions for chatbots or video generation tools, the industry will change drastically. And it's not just about changing industries, it's about how people's labor and work perspectives will shift in the coming years. I wouldn't say it'll take too long, but just by looking at how AI is developing and evolving right now, it's clear that it's going to affect a lot of jobs. So, it's better to be a forward thinker. Prepare yourself, adopt cutting-edge technology early, and stay ahead. That's what my YouTube channel is all about, creating content for future thinkers. Right here, I've tried another example with a longer length. Let's set it to 20 seconds. By the way, this duration can be dynamically adjusted based on the audio info. I'll go into more detail about that later in the workflow. But so far, this is the basic workflow. You can use one image and either text to speech, or if you have audio files, use the load audio custom node to input the sound file. Then just wait for the result. I'll generate a few more tests and I'll show them at the end of this video. Here's another example of how the AI avatar looks and it's pretty nice this time. Let's check out the rest of the demonstration videos generated here. Welcome to Benji AI Playground, your gateway to tomorrow's technology today. Ever wondered how AI is reshaping our world? From automating workflows to generating art, coding, and even predicting the unpredictable, we're here to break it all down. Dive into hands-on demos of the latest AI tools, step-by-step -step tutorials, and deep dives into the tech that's revolutionizing industries. Whether you're a seasoned developer, a curious creator, or just AI-obsessed, we've got something to spark your imagination, but this isn't just about flashy gadgets. It's about understanding the how and why. How do large language models like GPT-4 think? Can AI agents truly work autonomously? And what does ethical AI even look like? We're not just showcasing the future, we're demystifying it. Join us as we turn complexity into clarity. Learn to build your own AI workflows, optimize your productivity, and stay ahead in a world where innovation never sleeps. Hit subscribe, ring that bell, and let's explore the future. One algorithm at a time. Benji AI Playground where curiosity sparks innovation and the future is always within reach. See you in the next video.